and welcome to the Fat Squirrel Speaks. Today is Wednesday, November 13th. I had to look, I'm sorry. This episode 87? I'm guessing. That's maybe. It's right? I heard you. If you're a new viewer, welcome! Word on the street is if you're a new viewer, if you're a brand new viewer, you may hate this right now. Are you ready? It's okay. You may hate this show right now. You are literally thinking to yourself, who is this crazy lady? Why is her hair all whacked out? Why is there backlighting? Don't worry. It's okay. Don't like it in three minutes. Turn it off. Try me again in six months. Apparently that's how it works. Three months, maybe. Then you'll love me. Necessarily. But those of you who do then will tell me. So I just think that. <laughs> Luckily, those of you who are like, no, I still hate that lady. Don't just write me to say, hey, yeah, I tried you again. Still hate your face. So thanks for that. If you don't come back. <laughs> yeah, you. Um, if you're a new viewer, hi, though. That was the point of that. Hi. I'm your host, Sammy Beth. Also known as Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and Fat Squirrel, S-Q-R-R-L, on Instagram. Um, and Twitter via Instagram. Um, and if you're a returning viewer, hi. Thank you for spending time again with me this week. I love your face. I'm sorry, but this is out of control. What is this? This is what is this? I only get my hair cut twice a year because I'm stingy. Um. And so when I got my cut haircut for my birthday, she went crazy. She just like gave me 9,000 layers and apparently what were supposed to be bangs. I haven't had bangs since I was in middle school. Now it's not her fault completely because I get in that chair and I'm like, I have paralysis. I'm like, just do whatever looks good. I trust you. And usually she does a very lovely job, but like she's just making progressively and progressively or like layery. Like she's just like, Ooh, yes, let's make it a thousand different links. And this was the time where I was like, no, afterwards. It's a hot mess. Look at that. It's not like it's terrible, but it's just too many different layers for me. I'm all like, Woo, I'm mathy. This is too much chaos on my head. So anyway, that's a lot of me explaining my hair. I'm so vain. You think fat people aren't vain? We're totally still vain. Well, some of us are. Some of us aren't, but I am. <laughs> Dang it. Anyway. Um, yeah, like what? It's like swoopy. See, this is what my dad's hair did, so it makes me think of him, but it's also like what all these like boy band things are, like this swoop in the front. It's so annoying. So, see there, it's okay. If it will pretend it's one piece with this, it's fine. But when it doesn't pretend that, it makes me very anxious. So maybe I should just put a hat on. Really, I have one in standby because I was afraid this would happen. Really, this is a lot of me talking to you. That's what the show is. Why am I surprised? Okay, that's better. Oh, there, I cannot mess with it now. It's ridiculous, right? Anyway, that was an exercise in stupidity. I like those. Sometimes they're fun. Um, shenanigans. So what did we do shenanigany wise this week? Oh, we went to the holiday park. I'm so thankful for it. You know, this is our month of thanks. Really try to be thankful all the months. It's much better that way. But anyway, this is our specifically our month of thanks. In the U.S., we have Thanksgiving this year, this year, this month, also this year. Um, so people are trying to be more mindful of things they're thankful for. I am super thankful for Cincinnati. Or Cincinnati. That's not the city I live in anymore. <laughs> Indianapolis's public park system. We have a great public park system for a city of smallness and kind of industrialness. It's not the prettiest city. I'm just going to say that. It's not the prettiest city. But we do have an excellent park system. And so we, we went to the Holiday Park, which is one of our favorites. It is a little bit further away. It's about a 20-minute drive. 15 minutes. It's 20 minutes if you stop at Starbucks. <laughs> My time I'm done. Um, oh, but so it's beautiful, though. They have an awesome playground. They actually have three playgrounds in one. They have, like, the toddlery kind of playground. And they have, like, a playground. And they have a playground for bigger kids that has, like, 30-foot slides, which is awesome. And I will try. Now, don't hold me to it. I'm going to try to do that clever thing that some podcasters do where they do the music and the pictures at the end. I don't know if I can make that happen. 
a wiser woman would have done a test trial so she could decide if she could even offer the potential of that happening. I am not that wiser woman. Okay? Fly, see pants. See the pants. See the pants. Fly. So, we'll see if that works. I'm sorry, that just flipped color wise. That's very confusing when it does that. There it goes back in. We'll see. Um, Oh, but so we had lots of fun and we, we have not had, we've had a little bit of rain, but it's not been crazy. Um, typical, I would say autumn weather, but so we wanted to go after the playground we did the nature center, which is lovely. Oh, but our bees all died. In the nature center, they have like a door that you can open. It's like a, and there's a beehive that's like the glass, you know, and the hives on the outside. And we went to open up to see what the bees were doing because we were all excited about that. I haven't at least wiped my hands in front of the screen, the camera that gets confused. So sorry about this. Um, so we went to see the bees, see what they were doing. They were all dead. So we went and asked the naturalist what was going on. They don't know either. But so sad. I immediately was like, oh my gosh, it's colony collapse. We're not going to have any more apples forever. Because colony collapse is one of the things that keeps me up at night. Oh, like so many other things. <laughs> Fun to worry about stuff you get control. But anyway, so they said, no, this is probably not that. They think they just got like a fungus or some sort of like bacteria or something. And then they all pooped out. So they're getting new ones. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So then we went on a hike and it was very lovely. Except when you hike this time of year. And I say hike. It, that's totally hyperbolic. It was a walk. We went on a walk. <laughs> there were elevation changes, but not dramatic. You know, it's probably less than two miles. It's probably like a mile and a half. If that's maybe it's two miles. So it's, we went for a walk. We say hike because it's fun to say hike and the kid likes it. But so we went for a hike in the, I'm just going to keep saying it evidently. We went for the hike, but in the fall, it's kind of, it's less treacherous to hike in the fall because there's so much leaf cover on the trails. You cannot see when you are about to step into a bog. Foreshadowing. So we hike down and we hike around. We hike. So finally we get down to the White River, which we always enjoy. You can't wade really this time of year. It's a little chilly and the kids don't have appropriate shoes on, et cetera, et cetera. I really hadn't had it in my head that we were going to go for a little hike. So I'm like, I have like a handbag. I'm not a dork. I'm like carrying a purse. I'm not sporty at all, but I am wearing stretchy pants because that's all I wear. <laughs> and I'm wearing like my little, oh, I'm wearing my little barefoot shoes. That's, this is important for the story. I'm wearing my little Merrill barefoot trail shoes, which I love. But they are mesh, essentially. They don't look like mesh, but that's essentially what they are. So we go down to the little creek in, or the river and she's looking at shells and she collected shells. She collected a, a billion shells. And then... We're like, oh, okay, well, let's go down to that other part of the stream, river, whatever. So, okay, so we know that that hike is a little bit treacherous um, because it has all of the, because it's the White River and there is a significant elevation change. There are a lot of streams that feed down into the river off of this hill. Uh, but most of them have like a wood plank across them and it's pretty sturdy. I mean, it's not just like a piece of plywood somebody threw. It's like actually like a, it's bolted down into something and so it's it's relatively secure and so we're like okay so let's do that okay okay so we get across one and then we get across maybe another one and then there's a one and i remember there's one that the stream comes down there's no plank it's just there are some raised roots and you can kind of across Unless there are three inches of golden, beautiful, wet leaves on top of it, in which case you cannot see. So it's very, it's like a steep little, it's just a little bit, but it's steep, you know, and I'm me, not a light, delicate feather. Sorry, it's not trying to move my hands. Let's back the camera up. Um, so we're like, okay, sure. So the daughter goes down first and she's a little bit like, whoa, and she steps off like she goes completely the wrong, like she doesn't go across. She goes like up because she loses her footing. And so then I proceed to do the same thing, except I weigh like 250 pounds more than she does. <laughs> so she's like sprint, like she's like a little like water skater. She's like, Duh -duh 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 -duh. and she like goes back up the like little hill and she's like, oh. And she's got mud on her shoes. 
And it's not like it's a very liquidy mud. It's it's the river bed. It's muddy river bed, not rocky. So it's not like a glumpy mud. You know, so there's a difference. It's not real clayey and sticky. But she's got, you know, a good maybe inch and a half of mud around her shoe. I'm like, okay. Again, not in my head thinking. I'm gonna try to do this and weigh 250 pounds more. In my mushy shoes. <laughs> so I also lose my footing in the leaf debris. And also find the bog that my child found, except that I find it up to my ankles because <laughs> my feet immediately just go and, and my shoes, which I don't think about that are mesh, like all of the mud water, just right into them. Like not even like a pretend, like oh, your feet are damp, no, feet are dry, feet are wet, feet are wet, with mud in your hand and socks. Okay. So. I'm sorry, the camera lighting is being stupid. I'm really, I do apologize. I don't know how to make it undo that. Um, so we go, so finally I get up with the, uh, and of course you can't stop when you're in that situation. You just have to keep like running as a fat lady. Because if you stop, then you literally will sink up to your knees and then you will be in the bog you know, of despair and you can't get out. So you just have to keep moving, 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 moving. So I'm, uh, thank goodness there's no, well, I don't think there was anybody to see me. <laughs> Oh, YouTube videos later. So I, I have mud all, I mean, splattered up to my knees. And I'm like, oh, we still have a good, you know, we're only like halfway through the distance of our hike at this point. So I'm really like, oh, crud, I've got wet feet. I'm going to get blisters. It's going to be terrible. And it's chilly, not freezing cold, but chilly. Somehow I feel like the mud might add additional grit and therefore give me worse blisters. So we go back down to the creek bed and I'm like, dude, I'm doing it. I'm getting in the creek. It's November. I'm getting in the creek. So I got in the creek and rinsed my feet off and got wet. Then literally up to my knees because I'm a beast. But that worked really well. So then we proceeded to finish our hike. But let me just say, wool socks. What? what? Wool socks, no blisters. Not even, a, not even, not even abrasive hot spots. Nothing. Because wool socks are magic. And in fact, I was wearing 100% merino wool socks, which I am always afraid of. The Vesper, somebody gifted to me. And I'm always afraid that those are going to just like dissolve. Not a problem. The water just made them plump up. And they think they were even better when they were wet. I'm not lying. Magic. So those were our shenanigans. But I am. Do you feel like I'm reaching for shenanigans? Eh, what else? <laughs> Oh, what am I wearing? In case you're worried, considered, concerned, questioning, something like that. I'm wearing my slippery hat, which is a lovely hat. And is it with Marigold Jen and her worsted weight, but I cannot remember the colorway. And I'm wearing my Emily sweater, which is E-M-E-L-I-E, -E, I believe. And I have no idea. Um, and it is knit with Beaver Slide Dry Goods and their sport weight. They're plied one. They, I think they have a single and a ply. This is the plied one. It has some mohair in it. And I believe it's the blue jay colorway. I feel like it's a bird. I feel like it's a blue jay. And it's a three-quarter sleeve. Bank. So I'm wearing some long johns because I'm classy like that. Look at this Fancy. Anyway, let's talk about some stuff that we're supposed to talk about. I have no fin spinning finished objects, but I do have some... I do have a spinning work in progress, which is in my bag from the lovely, the knotted bag. This is her spinning bag. It's fancy, 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 slippery lighting. It's squirrels. Okay. And I am spinning some Cloud Lover, which I believe is Merino. Yes, in the DK color, in the DK, in the Decay colorway. Decay. <gasps> Somebody needs to make a Decay colorway. I don't know what it would be. It would just be awesome. So I have coveted this for many, many, and many, many a time. And finally, when I was at Stitches Midwest, I did purchase it. And here it is on the bobbin. I have two ounces done, two ounces to go. I'm trying for a worsted weight, but I really feel like it's going to end up being bulky. Bronwyn released her pattern. Do I have it around here? Because I'm going to make him. Oh, I put it over there. Bronwyn released her pattern. Bronwyn. I'm knitting pipeline fame. Released her pattern quiver, which is a convertible mitt. And I've been wanting to make convertible mitts out of hand spun. And they're wit and bleh. Didn't worse the weight. I have no worse weight hand spun. I have some sport. I have some fingering and I have a lot of bulky. I have no worse to weight. What's up with that? Evidently I cannot spin worse weight. Everything around it, but not that. So I'm trying. 
But let's face it, it's probably ended up being bulky. But it's beautiful. I'm enjoying it very much. Lovely to spin, no problems. I'm telling my bobbin not to roll off the table. Oh, this, this is the show in which nothing is in the right order. Time is not linear, people. I'm just experiencing that today. The lovely Erin of Bling Your Strings sent us another prize. She does um, bag of the pouches, Project Pouch of the Month clubs. So this would be her second installment from her Bold and Beautiful Club. And of course you get the lovely stitch markers and a little project pouch, a little uh, notions pouch even this time. What? Right. She just sent that for us for a prize and I don't know what the prize, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we'll make that happen. Yay her! Okay. Knitting! Okay, I do have one finished object. I'm going to give you a warning for this week's knitting. Are you ready for it? It's all feet. I did not knit on one thing that was not for your feet. My love, my husband's lovely hat and uh, sweater, not a stitch. Everything feet. This happened that way. Truthfully, I had so much sewing to do. <laughs> I was sewing like a fiend. And his hat and his sweater both are a little bit hard on the hands. And I've been wearing like the little wrist brace and like, <laughs> I've been gimpy. It's been a wreck. So that was part of the reason. These were just a little bit easier on my hands. So last week I showed you that I had a pair of seamless Stilomas. Now I have two pairs. See, I had to show them together because the same color. I didn't want you to think I was trying to trick you. One of them is slightly bigger than the other. And these are knit with Barocco chunk, Vintage Chunky. And this is colorway 61173, I believe. I don't know. But I believe it's six months. Later. So yay that! Um, you will notice perhaps if you've knit these slippers that I am using bulky weight or chunky weight as the case may be, and the pattern is really written for worsted. Um, I just wanted them to be really squishy, so I am basically knitting a size smaller than what the person would normally require. So if, for example, this is a free pattern, if for example they would need a size medium for nine and a half inch foot length, I would knit them the small for an eight inch. And it's very easy if you need to go smaller than that, because uh, the pair I'm knitting right now are actually, the smallest that are written here are 34 for one needle, and I'm actually knitting 30s, but it's not a challenge at all. It's very easy to, to go down a size. So those are all, those are holiday gifts this year. So now I'm knitting another pair, which I don't even have the color ball band for, because but it's this color. And these are for a wee kiddo. Well, a normal sized kiddo, but they're wee. Aren't they cute and tiny? They stretch so big. So they, they look, you look at them and you're like, that's totally not going to fit a human. It totally does. It's cool. Um, so I have one more in the works. And I am knitting these on US sixes, I believe. Or maybe they're, yep, sixes. They're very pleasant to knit. If you have to do a large quantity of holiday knitting, then that is the way to go. The way to go. Um, and it takes less than a skein to do an adult. Like even for my size, I'm a ladies, uh, women's size 11, men's size 9, 9 and a half. Even for my size, it still only takes one ball. One skein. Those are 100 gram skeins. Okay, so there's that. Do I need to show you this? I don't even need to show you that. That's silly. That's silly. I have like an inch on one sock. They've already seen the other sock up. Um, oh, I finished. So I have a fa half finished object. I finished this giant man sock. Man, why do you have such big feet? I have big feet though, so at least it's not like total surprise. But isn't that pretty? This is the Croy socks in the, the patents, Croy socks, in the brown striped rag colorway. I love it. I'm going to have to make myself a pair. That is all there is to it. I am knitting these on size zero double points. I have this much. I just finished the ribbing, essentially. And that is that. So I need to tell you, right? Oh, this is a men's size 11, I hope, sock. And I had this much left over still. 
So that's awesome, right? And it's a plain socket at stock, nothing fancy. It doesn't have a ridiculously long cuff, but still I had extra. I was very pleased. I was really thinking I was gonna need an extra ball. Oh, and another thing to mention, um, they start at the same place. Now, I don't know if every ball starts at the same place, but it would make sense if two did, then probably it's a theme. Um, so they start at the same place. You don't have to worry about this. I had decided that I wasn't going to worry about the stripes matching up because I didn't have enough yarn to do that. There you go. Oh, plain old slip stitch heel. It's a little bit shorter than normal, um, but whatever. And these are a 68 stitch sock. 64. I felt. Oh, no, that's what it is. Okay. These are top down, cuff down. So I got down to here and got the heel flap done, got to here, tried it on, and I figured, again, yeah, I'm a men's size nine and a half, so if size 11 would probably be comparable in width. It probably has a slightly narrower foot than I do because I have a very fat foot. Okay. Um, but I got to here and I was like, yeah, this is a little snug. Because the Koi socks, usually I do a 72 stitch sock for myself, but this is a heavier, I was definitely say heavy figuring weight yarn. So I got there and I was like, hmm. No, don't think so. So when I um, when I was decreasing for the gusset, instead of decreasing back to the 64 stitches, I decreased it to 68. So that's the way I fudged it. So hopefully I remember to do the same thing on this needle. I'm not going to check right now, but I'm guessing I probably did it. <laughs> oh, it's so tempting. I want to count. I won't count. Sorry. But it's very tempting. I'm like, hmm, but I... Cause I'm going to put it back in this bag and then forget that we had this conversation and then I'm going to just keep going on my merry way and then not discover it until much later that in fact, the way. because he doesn't have, he's not a lady and like, he doesn't have particularly chunky calves. I don't believe. So I don't, I'm not worried about it fitting his calf. I just was worried about the width of the foot. Whatever. <laughs> I'm a hot mouse. Oh, I'll show you this too. Um, you may recall, I have some socks that I knit from the, lovely Joan of Lollipop yarn, her, her yarn in the lazy day colorway. And they were so beautiful and so snugly knitted. And I was so excited about them. I put them on and they were like quarter of an inch to half an inch too short in the foot. They had an afterthought heel. The thing about an afterthought heel, I love an afterthought heel, but if it is at all too short, kiss it goodbye. Because that thing is not going to stay on your foot. It has to be the correct length or you're in trouble. It's just not going to fit on there. It's going to slide down all day long and make you crazy. So they had to sit on the shelf for, I don't know how long it's been since I finished these, like a month. And I just had to look at them and be like, I really want those socks. What am I going to do to make the socks work? And I knew what I could do. I just was resisting it for some reason. So what I decided to do was I took the heel apart because it's an afterthought heel, right? You can do that. No biggie. The other option was to like undo the whole cuff and, oh, and the heels too. That did not sound what I, like I, what I wanted to do at all. Not at all. So I ripped out the heel and decided instead of, I believe that the afterthought heel has you do five rows of plain stock. And again, it's a big pattern. I believe it has you do five rows of stock, plain stockinette before you start doing the decreases, which worked out to be about a stripe. So I just decided I would rip that out and do two stripes even, and then start my deep. My head looks very tall when I do that. <laughs> that I would, <coughs> excuse me, that I would rip out and do two stripes plain before I started to do the decrease. And that has worked out so well. So I did this one and you can see it looks like the heel looks a little deeper than normal. Instead of it being a right angle, it's definitely like ink. It's this way more, but it fits perfectly still. Still good. This time I do that on the second one too. Oh my gosh. There's a little tiny ball of yarn that I ripped out of the heel. I'm disappearing. It's very exciting. Oh my gosh, I'm totally wearing Jones socks too. I'm wearing my pinky pink ones. So I'm doing that for the second one as well. Working on it. Working on it. Make those socks wearable for my sock drawer. Okay. Oh, I meant to do that. I forgot. As part of my feet episode, oh, for feet's sake, <laughs> I meant to bring, oh, I had such grand designs. And then I took my kid to the bus stop and lost it all. When you know it, I'm blaming her. <coughs> what time? Nah, I don't really want to do that. 
But I was so excited because I was also going to talk about the um, felts, which I wasn't really going to talk about for real because I haven't actually processed that in my head. But um, Kat Bordy has just released her felts ebook, and if you would listen, if you listen to Twin Set Designs, it's Twin Set Designs, right? Her podcast. It's Twin Set something. I think it's Twin Set Designs. Or if you listen to the Knitmore Girls, they talk about the felts this last ish episodes. Um, and so that's a new Cat Bordy felted slipper uh, pattern. And the proceeds all go towards an innovative sort of cancer research. And the researcher is out of Vermont, which makes me trust him. It's going to be honest with you. The minute they said they couldn't get funding from Big Medicine, I was like, hmm, I'll, I'll give you my $20. I'm like, if big medicine is against it, I'm probably for it. <laughs> That's how I judge things. Um, but also because I was like, ooh, slippers. I love slippers. And I need some more because I just wore a hole in one of my pairs. So I was very excited about that. So if you haven't checked it out, please do so. If you're behind on your podcasts, like I often am, listen to those gals and they'll tell you more about it. Uh, but it's also, it's just F-E-L-F-E-L-F-S. It's by Cat Bordy, who we all love and know. And enjoy the pieces out of. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yes, so I fixed those socks. Okay, back on track, right? We're on the train. And then I started throwing needles everywhere. It's very confusing. I started a pair of hand spun socks for myself. Was that not a crazy face look? It totally was. Um, this is from Into the World. Superwash BFL Lagoon Colorway. So I did plain old three ply. Well, plain old three ply ish. I'm gonna start my socks. <laughs> it's my first hand spun socks. I'm so fancy. Look at that. It's really not capturing the gorgeousness. It really isn't. So I just put my waist yarn in. You can see it right there, kind of-ish. I don't really know if I'm going to have enough yarn. <laughs> Dang it! I'm really hoping. I only have about 300 yards, but I have more of this fiber. I can just, you know, like if I get to this and I realize I only have 50 grams left, I can always, um, 50 grams, right? They're 100 grams, not ounces, right? Ooh, that would be my saving grace. Anyway. Um, if I get to, you know, if I get to the cuff, the, the length I want, and then I realize I'm not going to have enough, I can always spin them, spin some up for the heel and I could just do like a chain ply or something for that. But yay, socks. They fit smashingly well. Um, I knit the foot. It's heavier than fingering weight, but I still knit the foot on double zeros because, because there's no nylon cont nylon. Some people call that nylon. Because there's no nylon content in them. I wanted to you know, I really wanted to knit them as firmly as I could, but then I have switched to regular old zeros for the cuff, uh, because I have fat lady leg. And again, the durability is not an issue for the cuff. So that will both give me a little bit more bang for my buck yardage wise, and probably will make it fit me better. So that's that. Okay. That's all right. Right. Okay, good. I was trying to have a shortish episode this week because it's been ridiculous. Um, there is no shameless self-promotion except that there will be a shop update on Friday. That's Friday the 15th, I'm going to say. I believe it's 15th. Yes. At 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, there were a few bags last week that I just could not get to. I just, I just could not get them sewn. So, by the way, I had so much stress before the update this last week because I really thought I had overextended myself. I mean, I, th I knew that I had overextended myself in terms of like how much I could get sewn. Like I was really pulling some long days. That's not the issue. I was really like, Oh my gosh, I have gone crazy and people are going to buy like three bags and then it's going to be over. <laughs> These are going to sit in the shop for months until somebody just gives me like a pity purchase, you know, which you never want as a, per as a maker of things. You don't want anybody to be like, Oh, Bless your heart. I'm going to buy that. You don't want that. <laughs> but I really had terrible fears of that happening. It didn't happen. Thank you. So I was very, very tickled. The bag's all sold out. Yay! 
We're the best customers. Um, so thank you very much for that. It was very, I'm trying not to get all over clumped. Uh, but it was very touching and thank you very much. I'm so excited. Um, so there will be a few more bags. The, the pinkish bags that I showed last time uh, will be up on Friday. So there's like the cars with the trees on them and the pink, crazy aluminum looking trees and the um, green and pink big ornament fabric. Those will all go up. They'll all be large wedges. Um, and then there will be one of the like winter tiles, the black ones with like little squares on it with a snowman and the tree and the snowflake. There'll be one sweater bag of those because somebody accidentally bought more than one. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> She was buying from a phone and just, um, so there'll be that. And there'll be one big Aaron sweater bag, I think too, that I have sewn that, that somebody was able to get. So I think there'll be those things too. So that was random. Sorry. <laughs> so whew, good job. Me not making a 45 minute episode. If I had talked about all the things I planned on talking about over another 45 minutes. So sometimes it's good that my forgetfulness keeps me from talking about things. But I will talk more about those felfs as I make myself a pair because I must do so. I must. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely week. And I will talk to you next time.